It's time to start the stream. So, uh, hello everyone, my uh, three people watching. So, uh, we're going to go over the CAS. So, if you have any suggestions of what I should be doing or you have any questions, there is a live chat. So, you can absolutely comment and uh, interact with me as much as possible. So, uh, now that we're here, let's actually uh, start. So this is the home screen of your CAS. This is a TI Inspire CX CAS calculator, and it's uh, it's just like your phone's home screen. It works the exact same way, and you have all your apps at the bottom here, and you have a bunch of uh, different like settings here. So uh, let's look at the settings first. So at any time that you see a number or a letter next to an option, you can always press that number to enter that option, or you can use uh, this trackpad here to uh, move your cursor to that option. So we're going to go to settings, and you can see that there's a bunch of settings already. So we, we can change the language, there's document settings, handheld setup, this status login network and the TI Invent uh, Innovator Hub. So we won't worry about most of these. I want to go into document settings. So let's go to document settings. And here are my document settings. So this is sort of like your default settings at all times. So display digits is basically how accurate do you want your approximate answer to be. So there's a bunch of different options and you can just hit enter to access these no you can't hit enter you can hit uh, right to open this little dialog or you can just hit the center button on your trackpad so now that you're here the default is float 6 but you may change it to something that's a little bit more accurate like float 12 so this is sort of like significant figures uh, there's also just a normal float which just defaults to uh, as many as possible and then there's fixed so this is like uh, fixed decimal places um, I like mine on float 6 but you may want more or less accuracy moving on to the next sort of setting angle so we have degree radian and gradient the rule of thumb here is to always use degree if you don't know what a radian is Right, so I'm gonna leave mine on degree. Now this exponential format, it should be on normal and I recommend that you leave it on normal. So what this does, scientific forces all of the calculator's results to be in ex uh, scientific notation. That's not exactly useful all the time. There, there may be use cases for it, but it's not, necessary most of the time. Engineering is slightly differently formatted to scientific so normal will just use scientific notation when it needs to. Uh, real or complex. Now if you're do using if you're doing specialist you will at one point change this to either polar or rectangular but if you don't know what that what it's talking about leave it on real. Calculation mode. So this is by default on auto. What that means is that when you hit enter, it will give you an exact value. And when you hit control enter, it will give you an approximate. But if there's a decimal in anywhere in your entire equation, it will always default to approximate. So exact mode will leave everything in an exact and approximate will always leave it in approximate. Now you can change this for individual documents as much as you want, but uh, just leave it for now. If you do methods and, and only methods, methods or, or specialists, you should leave it on exact. If you're doing further, you should be putting it on approximate. Otherwise, you can just leave it on auto. A vector format isn't really uh, an issue base. So this is uh, what type of number system you're going to use. Uh, 
So we are in the decimal system. We have 10 digits, right? We have zero to nine, and we use those to form our numbers. Hex uses 16, right? Binary uses two. Now, if you don't know what that stuff is, leave it on decimal. Unit system. So the English slash US is imperial units, so inches, uh, miles, uh, stuff like that. And SI is meters, kilograms, etc. So depending on where you are, depends on what sort of unit system you want. And you can just make default. So we'll hit enter. Apply these settings and save them to all new documents and scratch pad. Yes. So now that we've actually done that, I want to focus on the calculation app. So this is where you're going to spend most of your time. This is sort of the more familiar of uh, the apps. So let's let's open a calculated document. So I've hit enter and you get this. Now this doesn't look anything like the calculators that you've used before, but it works just the same. So I can just go over to my keypad, six times six, and rather than hitting equals up here below the control button, I'm gonna hit enter instead. So now that I've hit enter, it gives me the result over here to the right. Now, obviously this calculator is a little bit more special and you wouldn't be doing six times six. So let's do something a little bit uh, fancier. So we can actually store some variables in here. So uh, let's store a variable. Let's say I want to use uh, nine divided by 21 a lot. Rather than typing out nine divided by 21 all the time, I can actually store that as a variable. I can call that variable whatever I want to. So there's two ways of doing it. Uh, no, there's three ways of doing it. I'm going to show you all three. So let's start uh, with the easiest. So above the delete key that you just saw me use, there's a menu button. So if you hit that, you're going to have a whole host of options there. Now, I'm just going to go to actions and then hit define. So I'm going to hit enter. So now that I'm hit define, I can now put the name of the variable and then put an equals then I can call it and then I will put uh, 9 over 21 and you can see that it's snapped to a fraction so now that it's snapped to a fraction it, it's just in, a little bit easier to see and you know exactly what the calculator saw versus what you wanted to to see. So now every time I type A, you see it, how it's turned bold. That means it's referencing the 9 over 21. Now, if I wanted A times B, in mathematics we would just write them AB. Here, the CAS doesn't like that. You can see the, how it's become uh, italic now and it's no longer bold. So it's, the CAS treats AB as a separate variable and this variable has been undefined. So if we wanted to do a times b, we're going to have to put a times in between. And it, you can see that it turned bold again. So now that I, if I just type in a and hit enter, and you can see that it actually simplified the fraction that I put in. It's 3 over 7. So that's one way to define it. Let's, let's define a again. So this time, I'm, rather than going to the menu and... Uh, doing all these fancy tricks. I'm going to hit A and then I'm going to hit control which is this blue button. Now this blue button allows you to access all of the blue stuff above your button. So we're going to hit control and then the button right next to 9 and you get this colon equals thing here. What this is is basically everything to the right of this colon equals is going to be stored as A. So now I'm going to store it as 9 over 21, hit enter, and it's now been stored. So now when I go A, it'll be the same. Now, that's not really a 
good example or maybe I just want to change it rather than going through the whole process a and then colon equals all over again I can just go up a couple times and then hit enter and what that does is it will just copy it down to where my cursor was so now that I'm here I can actually change this to say 7 and hit enter you can see that uh, before when we used the define it just said done but here it's actually simplifying it for us and saving it now there is another way to do it so let's say uh, I want to change my a value to 8 over 21 now I don't want to go all the way to the front and then type in a colon equals right I'm already at the end so now that I'm here I'm gonna hit control and then the button above 9 var, var right and you get this little arrow thing so now I type in my letter or, or the variable name and now when I hit done you can see that it would give me the simplified form and it's been saved so now if I hit enter you can see that it's using this new definition of a and you can see that I've been overriding it I've been changing it as often as I want to so another thing that we can do is define functions so let's say I wanted to define a function f of x totally fine absolutely you can you can hit control and then colon equals and let's use that our a value beforehand so we'll type in a and we'll times it by x and then we will add one and I'm gonna hit enter so now this a here is referencing this 8 over 21 and this X is going to be whatever I sub in here so now I put in F you can see that it's in bold I'm gonna put F of 1 and hit enter you can see that it became 29 over over 21 so this is really useful for really really long expressions like polynomials and it's just really handy to have now there are times where you don't need to define it every single time maybe it's perfectly acceptable and easier to do to just type out whatever the whatever it is and then just sub in a value straight into it right I'm never going to use this ever again why why do, should I save it perfectly fine don't need to save it you hit control and then that equals button near the 7 and you get uh, this little dialog box so now you have to select the vertical bar which is like a such that and then I can put x equals and then I can put in a value so let's put x equals 1 and this will sub x equals 1 into the polynomial so we get 2 and you can see it did it for us so this is exactly the same as doing this but uh, it doesn't actually save it now what if I had a variable name that was really really long right I'm not going to type that on this uh, alphabetically ordered keyboard right it's just too long I'm not going to do it so let's actually define it as something right that variable name ah this is too long all right Alright, it's happy with that. All right. Equals two. Now I'm not gonna type that out. So what I can do instead is I can hit the var button above nine, and you can see that there's an actual list of uh, variables that we've defined. So we've defined a, we've defined the function f, and we also have whatever this is. And now I can hit enter and I can do whatever I want to it, and you can see it works just fine. Now maybe um, I don't want this variable anymore. I don't like it, don't need it, get rid of it. Fine, go to menu, actions, and you can delete a variable. Delete var, and then you just put the variable name. So we put it in, 
hit enter, you can see it's done. And now when I go to var, it's no longer there. Now if I wanted to delete a function, menu, actions, delete variable, var, f, and you don't put the brackets or f of x. And you can see it's gone. I hit variable. It's just gone now. So now I just have a. So let's define another variable. Plus equals one. Okay. Now let's say all these variables now are useless to me. I don't need it anymore. Absolutely fine. Menu, actions, clear a to z. Here, uh, character variables A to Z, right? Hit OK. Menu. Now, now, now when you go to variable, you can see that it has none, right? It's deleted our A and B variables. Now, this is getting very, very cluttered, so I want to somehow move away from this screen and pick up on maybe a different question or maybe I want to do something else. Perfectly fine. We can hit control and then the button above menu document and this will add a page. So now that we've got a page open, we can add a different app to the document. So I can add another calculator app or I can add a graphs app, anything that I want to do. I could also leave it blank and leave it like this. Now, another nifty sort of thing so I can go control and then up and you get this view here. So this will actually have like a thumbnail kind of preview of all of the pages that you have. And you can see that it has problem one up here. This problem one is actually confining all of my variables. So if I define A to be colon equals one. So now I have variable A and I can access it. If I make this a calculator document quickly and go to variable, I can still access it. But when I do control up and then I go to menu and insert a problem. All right, so now I have problem two. Come here, make it a calculator app variable and you can see there's nothing there. So now I have two calculator apps that have access to different variables. Now this comes in really, really handy when you don't want to confuse yourself with different uh, lists of variables. There can be a huge amount of variables that you can have. You can have absolutely tons of them and you don't need them all for one particular problem. So the CAS actually has this ability to have different problems and separate the variables for you. Let's see. Now the button next to 9, if we just click that, you can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So this is your template button. What this does is it basically allows you to quickly create things that you would you would need. So you want a fraction, it's here. You want an exponent, it's here. You want radical, no problem. E to the something, log. You want uh, to, to define a piecewise uh, function, absolutely you can. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can actually do here. And there's also degrees, minutes, seconds. There's the absolute value. You can also create some matrices of certain sizes here. It won't actually ask you to fill in a size. That's a different thing. But summation, uh, timesing, derivative, and some calculus stuff. And we also have this uh, subscript. So if we go here quickly, I can make it x1 and define it as something. So equals and 2, right? And you can see that it's saved. And I go to variable it's my x1 variable. So this may be handy for something that needs a subscript. 
and hit enter and you can see it's true. Uh, trigonometry. How are you going to use trigonometry? No problem. The button to the left of 7 and you get this thing here. So you have sine, cos, tan and you have the inverse as well and you also have these other trigonomic uh, functions that uh, I believe you use in specialists but not methods. If you don't know what these are, don't pay attention to them. Just use the ones that you know and need. So uh, let's uh, quickly do sine of 30. Sine 30 and there you go. Now the importance of specifying our angle comes in here. So we have set it in degrees so when I entered in 30 I actually told the calculator I want 30 degrees. If I wanted uh, 30 radians, right, I'm going to have to specify that now because it's in degree mode. So I can absolutely do that, 30, and then I can go to my little pi button next to the H, and you can see that there's a whole bunch of symbols here. So there's pi, there's the imaginary number, infinity, we have E, we have theta, we have a whole bunch of stuff. And this little R thing here is radians. So now it will assume that it is 30 radians and it's given me an approximate answer for that. And if I wanted, and it's given me an exact value. So if I wanted a approximate value, I can just easily go control and then enter and it will give me an approximate value. So this is around about uh, negative one to one decimal place. So now that that's here, uh, what else can we do? So there's, we touched on menu briefly and we just sort of been in the actions little thing here. We can also clear history and insert comments and things like that. But there's also things like number where we can convert to decimal, approximate the fraction, factor. So I want to go into factor real quick. I want the factors of 55, no problem. It's telling me it's 5 times 11. No problems there. Uh, what if it's uh, 123? Uh, 3 times 41. I can just keep entering in uh, numbers here and you can see that it's actually given me the primary decomposition. So this is 2 squared which is 4, 4 times 31 is 124 and you can, this will happen with uh, most numbers, it won't always be uh, as nice as 3 and 41. So if we go to menu and uh, factor again, number, factor, we can also do some other things. So let's say I wanted to factor x squared minus 1. I, it can absolutely do that, right? You hit enter and bang, it's done it for us. And this can happen for cubics as well, so let's do that quickly. There you go. Uh, let's say we have something here, uh, 9. So here, it, it didn't know what to do, right? So if you're going to have a number in front of your leading coefficient, you can put comma and then x and hit enter, and you can see that it's done it for us. Uh, another thing to note is that the CAS seems to prefer the fractional indices rather than radicals. Um, let's see. Uh, another thing that some people don't realize is that you can actually adjust the brightness of your CAS. So you can do that with control and then uh, plus and minus. Minus will make it darker, plus will make it brighter. By default, it's on the highest brightness possible. Now this is uh, not really an issue because brand new CAS, it can last for two weeks at a time. 
easily easily two weeks if you don't use it as often as I do it will last you for absolute months and you won't have to charge it at all yes it does need charging every now and again but that's not really an issue if you wanted to see what your battery uh, percentage is you can absolutely do that you can go to this little thing up here near the X the cog and you can see that there's a little bit of a battery status if you click that and go to status you can see the battery so here uh, because I'm using an emulator it doesn't actually have a battery but where these uh, hashtags are there will actually be proper numbers for you so here you can see that I'm running the latest version which is 4.5 and uh, here it will say 100%, 75%, 25% or uh, critical something like that if uh, something to note is that the battery is in 25% increments it will warn you if uh, a CAS is about to die but it it's not very precise it won't give you an accurate reading like your phone does you don't know if it's uh, 75 or 74 you can't tell the difference here uh, you can also notice that there's a storage capacity and storage available so you can actually save these uh, calculations and stuff like that if you want to uh, Let's say I wanted to use the answer previously, I can absolutely do that. I can hit control and this button next to enter and you can see that it has answer. So I can actually times that by three and hit enter and you can see that it's done it for me. And you can see that it's also formatted it for me. So now if I hit uh, enter, you can see that it's done the operation again. So now there's three times and then three up here and it's given me a 9. If I keep going you will you'll see that this 9 will turn into a 27 then 81 and so on. Just something to note. Now if you wanted to save a document at any time you can go to document you can go to file and save. So let's do that quickly. If save it and this is your file manager. This is just like a computer file uh, here, so I can call it whatever I want. Let's call it um, tut and hit save. So now you see the document name up here, tut, and you can access this at any time. So I can now close this, and you can see that the current's out, and I can go to my documents, which is like your file manager. And if I scroll down, you can see the tut document that I had, and I can hit enter and it will take me right where I left off. Now let's, uh, if I make a change here, just enter six, you can see that there's a star here now. That star means that it's not saved and you have something uh, different to the previous version. If you close this now, it will ask you, do you want to save, right? Now, if let's say I didn't want to exit I actually just wanted to uh, go back to the home screen. No problem. You can just hit the on button, which is also like your home button. So if you hit that, you'll be back to the home screen. Notice how current is now selectable. So if I go here, it will take me to the current document that I'm in. And there's something to note is that you can only have one document open at any time. Uh... Well, now that we're here, but we might as well define this as a uh, function. So now that I've defined that as a function, I want to graph it. No problem. I can hit Control and then Document. And I can go to Add Graphs. And now that you can see that it's added a graph, I hit Variable F of X, hit enter, and you can see that it's grafted for me. And I can actually move this uh, 
label around as much as I want to you would have to hover over it hit control and then hit the enter the uh, click icon here and you can actually move your function label around now you can see that uh, there isn't a, a whole lot going on here so uh, let's actually change the scale so let's make it uh, something like 300 still not uh, great it's probably because of that huge value and here it's too big all right let's let's quickly change our function to something that we can actually see uh, x squared and let's save that control store f of x and you'll see that the thing will update for me yeah now the blue's at the bottom so if I bring this down to something that's more appropriate 30 and you can see how it's graphed now uh, it, at any time if I wanted to reset it to the default zoom level go to menu just select zoom and zoom standard if you do that you will reset it to the 6.7 up and down and 10 left and right uh, so graphing is actually very powerful because there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can actually do here so if we go to graph entry slash edit you can see that this function there's a relation there's also some equation templates that we have here so if you go in here there's also a whole bunch of uh, predefined just types and you can uh, see line it's it it's got line slope intercept it's got vertical line it's got a line standard you go to a parabola right vertex form standard form vertex form and uh, standard form and you can even see the little uh, icons here just to know what it's sort of going to look like or you even put it in circle you can see that it's in uh, standard form and center form and you can enter that in ellipses and it has just a predefined thing for you hyperbole as well and there's also conic which is just uh, just that I don't know if how useful that is there's so many Jesus um, alright uh, there's also uh, paramatic polar uh, scatter plot we can also make it a sequence things like that uh, view so we can actually go into 3d if we really wanted to uh, we can also make it uh, plane geometry so let's that's sort of like there's a triangle uh, one of the corners of a triangle is at 1 comma 1 and the other one's here you can sort of do that here with the CAS if you really want to we can also hide access and end values I strongly uh, recommend that you don't do that but you can if you wanted to uh, show entry line do that and you can see that I'm here now notice how it's F2 if I wanted to get back to F1 I can go down oh no up so and you can see F1 right and it's sort of highlighted the graph for me so if I go down and F2 and define it as something else like uh, X plus 1 and hit enter you can see that it's a different color and I can move the function label somewhere else and now I can actually use it now rather than going to menu and doing that every time you can go hit tab and you can see that it's brought it up for us hit tab again to get rid of it uh, something that may like to do is uh, have a parameter in here so let's let's put uh, Q of X uh, cubed for example right hit enter now with the latest version it will actually ask me create a slider for Q and I can actually tick that and uncheck it if I wanted to 
and I can also cancel it so I can go change it. Maybe I didn't want it to be called Q or maybe the equation's wrong. So I can hit OK and you can see that there's an actual slider here. So I can actually click and drag it and move it across and I can also come here and drag the slider and I can see how it changes the graph. And you notice how the label has a bold Q uh, signifying that Q is actually a variable that it's referencing. So if I grab it and move it over here and you can see that it actually stays rather than moving all over the place. Now let's say I wanted to change the variable name, no problem. I want this to be QP. Great, it's now QP. Now this is wrong. Now this doesn't know what it's referencing to. So now when I change the slider, it doesn't know what to do. It's just going to use the latest Q value. So if I wanted to change the equation, I can go to tab, go up and change it from Q to QP enter and now it will actually work with my slider again. Now uh, there's a lot of stuff here so I just want to get rid of it no problem control delete you have to do it a couple times no all right go to menu you graph entry slash edit and setting setting oh but even I'm learning the CAS all right it's <laughs> so there's a bunch of graphing options that we have here just just for the graphing app so uh, geometry angle degree graphing angle radian uh, display digits float free so I'm going to change that actually float six okay Update. I will. Is it hard coded? Oh, okay. Um, as you saw, that I can actually click and drag and move around the graph, but this is actually very, very hard on a physical CAS. Uh, let's reset it to standard. Okay. Those are standard. Oh, it's not even liking that. Alright. Let's move on to something else. Uh, thank you, Bill Wilson, for your mum gay. That's great. I love it. Anyway. Uh, typically in further mathematics and general mathematics you'll be using lists and spreadsheet and data and statistics. Lists and spreadsheet is like mini Excel. So if you've used Excel before this looks very very familiar for you. So there is uh, a little bit of uh, getting used to though because what on earth is this up here. So here is where you can actually define a rule that will affect an entire column. All right. Uh, sorry for the interruption, folks. Now that we're back on track, this is the uh, equation. So this will affect an entire column. And this here with the tag is sort of like a variable name. So you can call this uh, list one if you want to. And you can reference uh, the entire column as list one. So let's put in some uh, data. One, two, three, four, five, and if I wanted to 
uh, let's say I wanted to uh, have column B here be 1 plus column A. No problem. Go to here. Right, give it a name first. So let's let's call this uh, list 2. Hit enter. And now uh, I can just start typing. So I can't hit variable because this will, uh, I can actually link to list 1 and list 2. Right, and that will just sort of display the list and everything that's in there. But I can def just hit equals. And you can see that it's got a colon equals here. So we're actually defining it to be something. And now when I hit uh, variable equals to list 1 plus 1, hit enter. And you can see that it's just 1 plus. Now for these uh, unfilled here, it won't actually do anything. So now if I continue the pattern, hit 6, you can see that it automatically updates for me. So uh, let's say I wanted to plot this on a scatter plot, no problem. That's where the other data and statistics application comes in. So this is sort of like a visualization. You can see that it's already done this, but this doesn't actually mean anything. This is uh, the CAS trying to uh, look interesting and smart. If you hit tab, see that it jumps to the uh, x-axis and let's plot uh, list one. And you can see that it's turned it into a dot plot. So I can actually go to menu, plot type, and I can change this to a box plot, a histogram, a normal probability plot. I can do all sorts of things. But let's say I wanted to make it a scatter plot, no problem. I hit tab again, list two, bang, it's a scatter plot for me. And I can uh, do all sorts of things with this. So let's say I wanted to put a line of best fit, no problem. Menu, go to analyze, and you go to regression, and show linear, either one here, but for further mathematics, you should be using A plus BX. Hit enter, and you can see that it's given me an equation here for us. And I can move that over here. And uh, so now that it's there, I can actually come back to my list. Let's say I wanted to change something. Uh, change this 6 to a 7. Hit enter. Come over here. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's off the screen now. That's no problem. Hit menu, window slash zoom, and zoom data. And this will automatically try and fit all the data in. So you can see that now that that point is actually there. Uh, how are people doing in chat? Joel, hello there. Yes, I am live streaming. I want some interaction. I want the interaction with the free people watching. Come on, bro. How are people doing? Come on. Is there anything that you guys want to see? In particular, no. Well, if you don't want to see something in particular, I'm just going to move on to the next thing. Doing some statistics, working on some statistics on these uh, lists. So let's let's do that since there doesn't seem to be anything in particular. All right. So let's say I wanted to calculate the uh, five number summary of this first list. No problem. Uh, I can act, do this from anywhere, but if I just put it uh, in the column that I want to actually perform the action in, it will autofill some stuff for me. So I go to menu, statistics, stack calculations, one variable statistics, hit enter, number of lists. So how many lists do I have? I have one. Hit enter, X list, and you can see that it's got A with these brackets here. These uh, these brackets is referring to the entire column, so this is the A column, uh, frequency list. So I can actually define a frequency list if I want to, so let's do that. 
let's define list two as my frequency list. And my first result column, I don't want it to be in b column B. I have data in there, so I'm going to put it in column C. And now I hit OK. And you can see that in column C, it's actually given me a bunch of like titles for me to see. And uh, you can see X bar, the mean, 4.5. And you can also see the summation. And this is uh, all the values squared and added up. This is the standard deviation for a sample for a population. This is how many uh, items there are. So there are 28. And we can also see our five number summary. So this is the minimum, first quartile, median, third, and our maximum. It's also uh, SSX, which is just X minus the mean squared and all added together. So there's a bunch of uh, useful statistics here, but what if I wanted some bivariate data uh, comparison? No problem. So select, uh, go to menu, statistics, stack calculations, linear regression. Now MX plus B and A plus BX really doesn't matter, but uh, for further, you should be using A plus BX anyway. So X list is the A column, Y list, uh, I want it to be list two. Save the regression. So it it knows that uh, I've got some functions, right? F1, F2, F3. So it's actually defaulted to F4. And I can call this whatever I want. I can also overwrite uh, functions if I want to. But uh, let's leave it as F4, and I can also define a frequency list again. Uh, category list, uh, include categories, and result column. So I don't want it in B. Uh, C's been taken up, D's been taken out, so I will put it in E. And hit OK. And you can see that in the E column we have the titles again, and this is our A value. So this is our y-intercept, that's our gradient. Uh, and it's given us the coefficient of determination. It's given us our R value. It's given us residuals as well. So you can see that the residual is uh, nothing. Now, this is sort of a very useless view because what if uh, we have a whole bunch of data here, right? Imagine a hundred different variables and you needed to see the residual for some uh, particular value, right? This is going to be very... Uh, tough to deal with but uh, never fear the CAS has a solution to everything you go to variable go to go to this little equation thing here hit var, hit var link to and you can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff that is created here so stat 2 frequency regression stat 2 residual x regression y regression so if we go to residual you can see this actually lists all the residuals for me and I can go here and change list 2 to stat z, stat 2 resid, and you can see that this has become a residual plot for me. Now I don't need to do that. I can have it in my, uh, just like this, if I wanted to, and then go menu, analyze, regression, I oh, know. Residuals and I can go show residual plot and you'll, you'll see that it has a little bit of a split view here And I can hover over the data values to see our uh, X value of 2 and the residual is nothing And you can uh, Shift the scale and you can see that it shifts for both here But uh, let's let's leave it at The standard so let's zoom data and you can see that it's highlighted the actual useful information. Now, one thing that I don't like about this is that you can't actually uh, see the residual plot. You can imagine that if this scale was uh, something a little bit more uh, silly like this and you have a whole bunch of stuff, it's not exactly clear if there's a pattern or not. And it's sort of hard to see, especially because the, the CAS's screen is really, really tiny. 
for, I can actually demonstrate that if I go to 100%, you can see how tiny this is, right? So let's bring it up to 350 again. So that's why there's uh, the, you can actually change this list to, to residual. Now to hide the residual plot at any time, we can go to menu, uh, analyze, residuals and I can hide the residual plot or if it's the last thing that I've done I can go control escape and this is like an undo so you can see that it's going through the uh, motions of what I've done so I adjusted the scale and now it's gone so uh, can't redo but you can do the residual plot again uh, residual show residual plot here it is just one add that for here. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to have a split screen view for whatever reason. I want uh, a calculation here and I want uh, to see the graph maybe over here. Uh, no problem. I can go to document and you can see option 5 page layout. So if I go there I can do a custom split or I can select a layout. So I, there's a whole bunch of uh, options I can have. I can split it through the middle horizontally. There's also I can have three things open at once and there's a whole bunch of uh, options for that and there's also layout 8 so I can have four things at the on the one screen at once all at the same time. Not always necessary, but it's there if you want to. So if I change this to layout two, you can see that there's something here. So let's uh, put a uh, graph, and let's say I wanted to plot f of x. So uh, so you can see that nothing's actually plotted here, but all of the equations are saved, and I can actually check. I can actually hit enter tab see when I go back to it it's actually checked now so now it's actually displaying on this graph thing now if maybe I don't this is too much graph I don't need all of that I want to see my calculations I can drag this across and squeeze the graph uh, as much as I need to and bring that over here So uh, this uh, document's getting very crowded, so uh, let, let's quickly save it, file, save. And now that I've told it where I want it to save it, I can just hit save and it doesn't ask me, it just knows, just like a regular uh, computer. So I can close this now, and I wanted to briefly talk about uh, notes. So this is basically like Microsoft Word. and so let's say you're allowed a CAS but you're not allowed notes, no problem. The CAS can do it all for you. You can just you have an entire keyboard and you have a bunch of symbols here as well. So you have question mark, explanation mark, uh, the money sign, degree, comma, percentage. You have all that, but maybe you, you want something uh, super, super um, obscure, no problem. Hit control and then the book button next to the template button and you can see that there's a whole host of uh, things that you can actually put in so accents you can put a registered if you want to a TM there's there's a whole bunch of symbols that you can actually use here but that's not even all of the symbols that we can use so if we uh, get out of this escape Alright, let's do Z. That's what the flag does. If you wanted to um, change the accent of a character, you can always hit this flag button and it will cycle through the different accents that you can actually use. You can see how it's been cycling through uh, the different accents here. Yeah. There's also this little return key 
Cashy didn't want to use the enter key for whatever reason, but that only works in notes. Uh, you can also have a space, of course, that's what the space bar is for. Now, this might, might seem like a normal text document, why would I use this? Because, uh, like everything on the CAS, the menu gives it all of its power. So if you, you can actually go to templates, and you can actually put uh, proofs, Q and A's. You can also insert a math box. So what that does is that allows me to type in uh, something. So let's say I wanted to know what the uh, Heron's formula, right? S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. And you can see that it's actually saved it for me. And it's perfectly formatted in the mathematical convention, right? I can times in, in between here as well. And uh, just to make it more apparent, you can also uh, do calculations in this math box. So let's, let's do something. Uh, let's insert a new math box. And do times six, hit enter, and you can see it's given me 18, right? So this, this document notes thing can actually have worked examples if you really want to, right? And it will show you, oh, this is 18, so now I can move on to the next thing. Uh, there's also some formatting here. So we can actually put fill color, text color, change all these things, also calculations, we can define variables, we can do everything that the calculator can do. You, you'll see this, uh, everything from 2 to 8 is all in the calculator app already. So you can already go to uh, number and there's the factor uh, thing that we had before. Factor 5, right, it, it told us. Factor of 5 is 5, which makes sense. You can see how it's uh, treating and using these notes application here. So if we actually select a math box and hit menu, see that there's a math box uh, options and we can go to attributes and you can show input and output, hide input, hide output, no calculation, right? So if we hide the output, okay, right? So now it's not here, and when I go to select it, you can see that it actually shows uh, 18. Maybe I don't want that, no problem. Menu, uh, MathBot options, attributes, and I can actually just no calculation and leave it as that. And now it won't display no matter where I am. Alright, so that's it for this stream. Uh, if you have any suggestions of what I should stream next, or uh, some ideas for me to stream, uh, put it in the chat now, or just go and leave a comment on the, the archive of this stream. I'll make this public. So uh, people can actually uh, see this afterwards. But uh, that's the end of the stream. So hope you've enjoyed. And if you have any questions, like always, you can just uh, leave a comment down below or contact me on social media. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.